Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Chris, and today I'm going to give you a glimpse inside on how I make this farm table. It's going to be stained and it's going to be painted, so let's check it out. Come on. Hi right, guys, well let's get started. I went to my local home center and I picked up all the materials there I needed for this project. I was looking at the pine boards that were pre-milled. I got some 1x4s and some 1x8s, and all of these were 8 feet long. Okay, well I lay these boards out, giving me a sense of how large the table is going to be, and I make some marks. I decided to go with pocket hole joinery here. It seemed to be the quickest and easiest way to get this done. Once this pocket hole jig is set up, it's kind of lather, rinse, repeat. You drill a hole, you move the board, so on and so forth. And in no time, every hole's drilled. Five boards is what I needed in total to give me the actual width I needed. I'm laying them out, making sure the holes are aligned, and they are. Little wood glue. Line the holes up, clamp it down, and you're in business. I used inch and a quarter pan head screws to assemble this panel. This process went very fast. I decided at the very end of the board, I would just use a squeeze clamp to hold the pieces flush to each other, and then the necessary clamping or the pulling the boards together would happen with that screw. Once that tabletop was completely assembled, I went ahead and started to mark out for these legs. As you can tell in the background, those legs are pretty beefy. The base of each one is 6 inches by 6 inches, so I decided to rip some Baltic birch plywood down into 4 inch strips to give it a little added support underneath that table. Baltic birch plywood is pretty much free of voids, it's a really really strong, I think 11 ply plywood, and here are all the pieces. Well here we are the next morning and it's time for some assembly. I went ahead and drilled some pocket holes in these 1x4s to start making a frame for this table. Marking out exactly where these legs go really helps this process go fast. As I start to build this undercarriage, I really start to see the table take shape. Man, these pocket holes make things go very quickly. Here I'm cutting out a piece of Baltic birch plywood at a 45 degree angle. This is simply going to be the brace that's going to hold the lag screw that's going to hold the leg to the table. I use Baltic birch because it's extremely strong. Looks like it fit pretty well. Pocket holes, of course, are going to attach this to the table. And I've gone ahead and cut every piece I needed. Use a little wood glue and you're in business. This technique that I'm using here of layering Baltic birch behind these pine boards is really going to give it a lot of rigidity and keep any twists and turns out of the table. This technique I got from a guy named Jimmy DeResta. He put out a farm table. I'll link it in the description below. Also, I'll describe a little bit about what he does at the end of this video. Wood glue and a few brads or what I use to kind of tack these in place before I put the pocket holes in. I don't typically use pocket holes on a lot of projects, but this one I decided to. I had to get this table out pretty quickly. And there's nothing wrong with pocket holes. They work well, they're really strong. And the perfect solution, if you're never gonna see anything, you can eat at this table for years and never know how it's constructed. There you go. If you look carefully, you can see how the wood is layered on top of each other, kind of creating these kind of makeshift mortise and tenon joints. Went together real nicely. Oh, goody. Here's the best process of the whole part. Sanding. We sand and we sand and we sand some more and we sand some more and my wife comes to get a couple drill bits for something she's working on. Actually, she helps me with this table at the very end of this video. More from her later. 
Okay, this trick is widely known in the woodworking community. If you got a little gap in the wood, you put a little glue on it and you sand it down. What this process does is the sandpaper makes sawdust that binds with the wood glue that creates a wood filler. You still got it there, you just do that process again a few more times and that gap will just disappear right in front of your eyes. Oh yeah, and we, uh, we sand some more. All right, now it's time to put a profile on this table. I decided to use a Roman OG bit. I hog out just a little bit of material first, and then I put the bit to final depth, and then I cut the rest away. Here's a slow motion shot of exactly how this Roman OG bit plows into the wood, removing the material, to give you a sense of exactly how this process works. Well now I gotta sand that profile a little bit, it's got some sharp edges on it. I find that hand sanding this is probably the way to go, but typically you can't do it with just sandpaper. If you ball up your sandpaper and a little bit of paper towel, that will then form to the edge that you need, giving you a nice smooth edge on whatever you're sanding. And now I finally get to put the legs on to kind of give it a good look. This is my first time putting it together, giving me a sense of scale of how big this thing's gonna be, and I'm extremely happy with how it's turning out so far. By the way, those legs you can buy at your local home center as well. Okay, now it's time to attach the legs. I use a couple different drill bits and I use an eight inch lag screw to do this. Just one is fine. I don't typically use two. One is pretty much all you need. The larger of the drill bits goes through the hole and it just touches the leg. With the smaller drill bit, I then finish that 45 degree angle drill right through. And now it's time to install the leg. Using an impact driver, I drive that lag screw home and that is extremely strong. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the table out. And I'm gonna stand this bad boy up. Now I'm a little over six feet tall, about six one, six two, so you can get a sense of scale of how big this thing is. All right, now to apply some stain. I'm using a dark, dark stain here. What I do is I flood the surface. I let it sit on there for about 20 minutes or so. Typically pine doesn't take dark stain to be extremely dark like I like it. I let it sit there for 30 minutes, I then wiped it off and I was very happy with the result. Now it's time for finishing. I use a three part finish that I make here. Um, it's boiled linseed oil, polyurethane, and mineral spirits. I use four parts polyurethane, three parts boiled linseed oil, and two parts mineral spirits. The first coat I always hand rub on there to kind of get it in all the cracks and crevices and I got a little help doing this. You can see, look who joined me in the shop today. This is my sweet, sweet daughter. Hey, sweetie. Hey. Hey, sweetie. What you doing? <laughs> it's always a good day in the shop when you can be joined by that little one. All right, now for some sanding. We sand off the first coat just a little bit and we start applying the second coat. I like to use a foam brush for this. It goes on very smooth, very accurately. I typically can get it on there pretty quickly as well. Now after three coats, the first one being hand rubbed and the second two being put on with a foam brush, it gives me a pretty nice shine, but it's not exactly smooth yet. So a light sanding with 800 grit sandpaper and then I use a foam 2000 grit sanding disc to get that sucker super smooth. I know not everybody has a vacuum sanding attachment, but you can do all this by hand. It'll just take you a little bit longer. I clean the surface with mineral spirits to get it all free of all that polyurethane dust. And the final coat is a half and half mixture of polyurethane and mineral spirits, equal parts. And this final coat goes on with an old t-shirt. I like to wrap it up and make myself an applicator that way. Okay, with the top finished, it's time to move on to the legs. My client, I'm actually building this for somebody. Uh, he wanted to buy it for his family for Christmas, so he hired me out to do so. And they wanted a dark top with white legs. This is just your standard paint. I put on a couple coats here. I finished the legs with dark stain, and you'll see why in a second. But I like to put this paint on in a, in a kind of a sweeping motion, giving you a nice final coat. Now 
Okay, now I'm applying the second coat of paint. And I demonstrate here that sweeping motion I was talking about. It gives you a nice clean look. These kind of horizontal brush marks. And there's my lovely wife. I told you we'd see her later. My wife is actually incredible at repurposing furniture. She's mastered the art of shabby chicing up any piece of furniture. And I enlisted her to shabby chic this thing up at the very end. I tried to do it myself, but she wouldn't let me. She goes, who's the expert at this? And so of course, she took over and she's doing a fantastic job. Thanks, baby. Well, here it is, guys, the final product. The table turned out awesome. The legs look great. I want to thank my wife for her talent on those legs. And also, the top. Man, five coats of polyurethane really protects and really brings out that shine. Extremely happy with how this turned out. This was a fun one. Um, I want to give a shout out to my dad and my grandfather for being major influences in my life on, on making things with my hands. Uh, those guys... You know, without them, I don't know where I'd be. Um, and another couple guys, or a couple guys I follow online. Uh, one guy is Bob from I Like to Make Stuff. He makes cool stuff like this. He's got a shirt um, that I ordered from him, trying to support him a little bit. I'll put a link down in the description below on his website. Check him out. His content is all over the place, from electronics to woodworking. Just check him out. He's awesome. Another guy is Jimmy DeResta. He actually gave me the inspiration to make this farm table in one of his videos, and I happened to use his technique of uh, doing the under bracing. Um, so I'll put a link in the description as well for his video as well. So I want to thank those two guys too. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me with this one. She was awake, so I had to bring her out here. It was a blast. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.